and welcome to episode 105 of Movies and Us. I'm TJ. And I'm Marcus. And this is the review show that reviews genre movies from the beginning sometimes. Today, we are covering the 2014 release of Big Hero 6. Now, you might be wondering... Why am I running a Marvel movie today? Because that's usually Marcus's job. It's because he's lazy and he makes me do everything. <laughs> that's true. Nah. Now my voice is uh, taking a rest today. As I'm saying this, I'm going to grab a cough drop and soothe my throat. Yeah. So you can continue. Marcus's voice is a little shot. So I'm going to be doing the majority of the talking, which is usually the case anyway. So <laughs> let's dive into the credits here. We're lucky this isn't a Superman Batman movie. Why? Because I would have a lot to say, probably. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> anyway, this movie was directed by Don Hall and Chris Williams. It was screenplay was written by Jordan Roberts, Robert L. Baird, Bar? Baird, uh, Daniel and Daniel Gerson. It was produced by Roy Connell. Connell Connelly. It stars Scott Addis, Ryan Potter, David Daniel Henry, Henny, Daniel Henny, T.J. Miller, Jamie Chung. Damon, Damon Wayans Jr. Really? That's what it says. Well, I guess he played <laughs> the only black guy. Yeah, yeah I guess. Uh, Genesis Rodriguez, James Cornwell, Ellen Tudyk, uh, Maya Rudolph, Katie Lowe's, Daniel Gerson, Paul Briggs. Wow. David Shaughnessy? Shaughnessy, yes. Yeah. Billy Bush and Stan Lee. You know, those are big names. A few big names in this one. Yeah. Uh, the movie is an hour 42? Yeah. Yeah, off the top. Yeah. All right. It had a budget of $165 million and brought in $657.8 million. So, I mean, quite a profit. It did. Which brings us to the box office. Yeah. Places it in the top 15 of the box office for 2014. Okay. I'm just looking at it because I just I forgot I had to do this. So I had to just bring it up. I'm just looking. <laughs> I'm admiring the box office of that year. So at number 15, we had Rio 2. It's an animated bird movie that they sing in. Okay, yeah. I, it's, I it's, didn't know of it. Yeah, it made $408 million. At number 14, we had a – how do I freeze that? It's the Godzilla from 2014. It's the Americans – Oh, so it's Godzilla 2014. Yeah, yeah I guess that's how you would say it. Uh, five hundred twenty-four million dollars. I remember it being really good. I haven't seen it. You know what? Sad. The last Godzilla movie was I don't, saw. Don't was say. Probably the nineties one. <laughs> I was young, and I have a fond memory of that movie. That it's is. not. It's not good, but I do enjoy the shittiness of that movie. I mean, it's it's weird that um, what you do when you're younger and what movies stick with you, even though they're bad. Yeah, yeah. Like you forgive them for nostalgia reasons. Yeah. Because so. that, that, they advertised the shit out of that movie when it came out. They did. I remember the yeah. advertisements. Taco Bell and just uh-huh. everything. But yeah, that movie. Uh, the 2014, it's it's solid. It's worth one watch, I think. I watched it like a few times. It just gets worse on each of you reviewing. But, no, well, yeah. I never saw it. I, 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 I don't like giant monsters. You know that. I know. But the goddamn, they're so good. <laughs> the giant mechs and giant monster shit came it to me all day. I find... I, I find those movies so boring. <laughs> uh, when they're not done in an entertaining hour and a half length, then yeah, they're, they're going to be boring. If you try to give it substance, you, they don't need substance. Anyway. Um, I thought you might enjoy this because it is from the human, pers- per- human perspective. You don't see no, much that's Godzilla. Kind, that's kind of the worst parts of those movies. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I figured you would like that. Like, the worst yeah. parts of the movies are the garbage humans characters, <laughs> and then, then there's like... 20 minutes of monster fights that are just, uh, is it over yet? And that's, that's, that's the movie. Like this movie, it tries to humanize the characters, which is fine. But every time Godzilla walks on screen, you're either seeing it at like the tail end of the fight or beginning of it. And it's just Cassie. Like you don't see anything. It's like, Oh, this is, this is fun. This is what I can't see Godzilla for. Yeah. But yeah I mean, it's, it's a movie. It's pretty, but it's, it's just a movie. Uh, number 13, we have American sniper made $547 million. Uh, number 12, How to Train Your Dragon 2, made $621 million. I know of that movie, never seen either one. There's three, four, so at least three movies in this TV series. All of it's fun, all of it's good. It's like that, how to, um, Kung Fu Panda series, like those are just fun. Good. Yeah, I never saw the anime any movies. of them either. You're missing out if you like animated stuff. At number 11, we have Big Hero 6, we made $657 million. That's not bad. No, made top oh. 11. The fact that it got 
overshadowed by number 10, uh, Interstellar, $677 million. That's very close. Yeah, that is very close, considering that movie was a big deal when that came out. Exactly. I think that one. I mean, did we, we did the box office. Yeah, we did this box office before, so I'm not going to do any more than that, but... I guess number one was Transformers Age of Station, which made $1.1 billion. <laughs> These movies are so bad. I don't know how they, why people go watch them. They're not same, good. Same thing in Fast and the Furious. It's just popcorn, turn your brains off, watch the action, and the big noises. That's that's it. Still. It's literally a blockbuster. Like that, that's, that's it. Is that the last time visiting 2014 box office? Yep. Yeah. They made a, a RoboCop remake at number 35. <laughs> yeah. Made $242 million. It wasn't good. Terrible movie. It was PG-13, which is basically the bad part about that. But yeah, that's all I got to say about that this year box office. All right. So, I mean, it's not much behind the scenes stuff. Apparently, they when Disney bought Marvel, they like said, pick some obscure characters and we'll make movies out of them <laughs> they, they had to pitch them and then one the guy who picked this movie said he came across the comic and said i just really like the name and so they went with it and made it i appreciate that i and i did read the original comic the first one anyway how, I, I mean i know it's nothing like this but like how was it it was meh no <laughs> I, I had no interest in continuing it was only <laughs> three issues too oh okay that's not bad like, um i only read the first issue that's bad. That's bad. Well, did they at least borrow stuff from this movie from that? Like, is Fran- France and Tokyo part of the book or no? No, it all takes place in Tokyo. Oh, okay. And weird. this is, and it's not France. It's San Francisco. And That's a San Fran, San Fran, San, Tokyo. San Fran, Tokyo. Tokyo, yeah. No, uh, the only thing they really took um, are... Betamax? The names. Oh, Beta, okay. Betamax is not even this. Yeah, he's something different. I saw, I saw the cover and like, oh, wow. He is like almost in. He's got two forms. Hero actually built him. Oh, yeah. Okay. And Hero doesn't have a brother or anything in in this in the yeah, they, they, they had a Disney fight, huh? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so he built this robot, and in its like servant form, it's like looks like almost like the thing in like a trench coat with a hat. Yeah. And then it transforms into this like screen humanoid scorpion thing. <laughs> Oh, okay. It's like, and they call it some stupid, like, gene formers or something like that. He's a <laughs> well, well, gene former or some when shit. The, when did the original comic come out? 1990s something. Late oh, so 90s. I guess Transformers was big back then, I guess. I mean, not at that point. 90s? Transformers, trans, it's, this was late 90s, like 99, 98. Well, the television show, what, came out 80s? 84, I think. Yeah, so the Transformers were popular, at least... To the early nineties, late nineties. No, they were. Well, they, they were relevant enough to be ripped off. Let's say. Oh that. yeah, oh sure, they were relevant. That's, that's, that's what I'm Shipped saying. Off. Yeah. I mean, but they weren't popular at that time. You don't think so? No, because all those cartoons kind of died out for you know yeah. extreme. Extreme. Yeah, that was the thing in the nineties. Everything had to be extreme. Yeah, uh, guts. Da, <laughs> da, da. So. Still watch the shit out of that shit. I'm aging myself, but yeah. But yes. Yeah, so so like that, um, they took a couple of the character designs, like the girls' character designs, and sli- slightly their their um, like abilities. Yeah, I'm looking at the covers. Like, were they? They look like they're teenagers slash older in the comic in the comics. They're yeah. older. Yeah, they look older. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> this is great. It's it's and like they took like the name of the one girl and stuff. And apparently, it, in the comic, it's like a a. a uh, government funded organization, Big uh, Hero Six. Okay. So, yeah, it's this is it's this movie is clearly inspired by the comic and had nothing to do with the comic, which probably was for the best because the comic is not that great. Now, all that being said, does this tie into Marvel and the MCU? No, or is this too fictional because of San Fran Tokyo? No, like they they did this as a standalone. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that was like people really liked the movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess you don't, huh? Uh, I mean, I have I have a question. Oh, okay. Right off the top. <laughs> uh, it's got a 90 it's got 90% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> I thought you would enjoy this, TJ. There, there was a talk of a possible uh, sequel. Yeah, but that the main talk about it was in 2015. Oh, sad. I was still, it, it's still going to happen. And uh, well, that's what I was going to think. 
late as March 2021, the guy behind it was like, he still wants a sequel, and since it's animated, they can do it at any time. Exactly. And plus, I know, I've, I've never been to Disney, but I think some of the characters walk around Disney, so there's shit like right. that going on. Although there is a television show that followed the movie. Oh, really? Yeah, it's called Big Hero 6, the, the series, okay. which actually spun off to another show called Baymax. Really? Yeah, so. I vaguely remember it. See, or seeing that advertised. Yeah, the Baymax show premiered on June 29th, 2022. So okay. they apparently did a manga for this, the movie, too. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There was a few video games and stuff. A bunch of uh, toys and stuff, because of course. <laughs> of course, you gotta make money out of this. It also won a bunch of awards. Yeah, that surprised me. It won the Best Animated Feature at the 87th Academy Awards. So Hold on. Best animated feature. Something else came out that year. I just said I feel. Transformers, Hobbit, Guardians, Maleficent, Hunger Games, X-Men, Captain, Dawn, Mason. How to Train Your Dragon, too. That's one. Come on. That's a good movie. You think it's better than this movie? The Lego movie. Come on. Um, I don't remember how. No, yeah, I do. I do. I do. I think, I think everything about How to Train Your Dragon series is better than this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, The movie also won Best Animated Feature and Animated F- Effects in an anime production at the 42nd Annual Annie Awards? I'm sorry, what? At the Annual What Awards? Annie Awards. You said this is anime? No, animated, best animated feature and animated effects in an oh, animated okay. production. Oh, okay. I was the question of that. For 42nd Annual Annie Awards. Okay. I don't know what the, those awards are. We always find new awards. Wow, every time we, it's insane to me. It also won a Kids' Choice Award for Favorite Animated Movie. Oh, but really over f***ing whatever. I guess because it's it like the first one. So that's fair, I guess. I mean, like you said, How to Train Your Dragon and Lego Movie. So like Lego Movie would have been the one that went, I would think. Cause that's a really good movie, yeah. visually at least. Is it animated? Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I guess it would be. I don't know. It just seems like it would be in a different category than something like this because of you would think so, but it's, it's just style. it's animated. Anyway, it also seemed to win every award that like <laughs> it seemed to win like every award it was nominated for in the thirteenth annual Visual Effects Society Award, which is insane because it won Outstanding Animation in an Animated Feature Motion Picture. It also won Outstanding Models in. Any motion media pro- project. It also won outstanding creative environment in an animated feature motion picture. It also won outstanding effects simulations in an animated feature motion picture. And it also won outstanding animated character in <laughs> an animated feature. Oh, uh, okay. It makes sense. Beta Max is a cute, huggable character. That's why it won a lot of these awards. I guess Lego Movie didn't have that. And How to Train Dragon is the second one, so they used to two is less. That's fair. Yeah. I forgot Betamax is kind of adorable. And this is kind of, it's not, it's an original, almost an original IP. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like, I mean, it's sure it's inspiration from a comic book, but this is, like, built from the ground up as an original. <laughs> and no one has heard of that fucking comic before this. Yeah, no, I didn't hear it yeah. before. Like, this. <laughs> like, everyone know what Lego is, so that's that's fair. I get why it won these awards. Um, yeah, and I think that's it uh yeah that's it for that it is apparently the third highest grossing animated superhero comedy film only losing out behind the incredibles and its sequel i mean mean, is there any other animated superhero comedy i'm sure there are are others from other companies and stuff uh probably dc uh yeah marvel yeah that's fair well are there animated Batman movies like this animation style. Yeah, I mean we watched a few. Wait, movies. what about what about Spider Man in the Spider Verse? This Spider, uh, I don't know if this has been updated since those movies came out because this is technically 2014. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you and saying. I don't know how much Spider Verse made either. I remember I was upset with the numbers when I saw it. Well, then this movie probably still made more money if you were upset. Probably, yeah. Uh, apparently the new one just recently came out is really good too. Well, yeah, man. But I want to see it, but I'm not going to. I should. Back, back to this um, this movie. It's also the second highest gross in science fiction animated film behind w- Only Wally. What? Yep. Cat Blood. Really? That's what it says. It's telling you what the, it's telling me. What, what, what makes. Hold on. There's got to be other science fiction anim, animation movies. Akira, right? Like, come on. That's, or is that. That's anime, and it there's no way anime is making $658 billion. <sighs> And that, gotta, and that movie's overrated as hell. Personally. I mean, you're, you're crazy, because whatever. But what about, like, 
I'm, just, I'm going to four and none of these movies are like any of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the main st- studio Ghibli. Like, oh, you know what? What? This is US and Canada. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's no way this is like worldwide. Yeah, this is US and Canada. Okay, okay. Because I was about to get offended by this. <laughs> And I, and I haven't even seen any of those movies I just mentioned, but like I would get offended. Well, I've seen Akira, but I would still get offended by this. Yeah, but at the same time, six hundred fifty-eight million dollars is a lot. It is, it is. But like, I feel like this isn't in the conversation. And of, I, just, I just, just don't think those other movies made decades ago would just hit that those thresholds. You know what I mean? That they would make today. Like if you if they were released today. No, I just don't think they they didn't make as much money as the movies make today. You know I mean, what I'm saying? I, I guess if you just for probably not. So that's why it's. It's not really surprising to me. I was, I was maybe because like I'm a movie guy and I always hear about those movie titles, right. and I never hear about this. But I guess as an average movie goer, nah, there's no way though. Plus, there's more people over the seas than there are here. So this movie is also the fifth highest, highest grossing Disney animated film in North America. What? <laughs> what? Fifth highest, yeah. So you think about all <laughs> these things, like t- like Toy Story or the whole trilogy right there? Like, come on. That's what it's saying, but if, if you would think it would have got a sequel, they didn't. They didn't want to milk. That's it. what I'm saying. Like, there, there's got to be some caveat to this. Like I said, this is just in U.S. and Canada, but even then, though, like Lion King, uh, all those. But apparently, it made 1.4 million dollars from its late Thursday night showing. Okay, which is higher than the, than um even what Frozen did and the Lego Movie. So if this is all factual, which I, it's hard for me to believe, but I can still see it being a thing, it's weird that they didn't want to make a sequel to this. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't, like... Unless, like, the numbers dropped off real quickly after the first week or so. But even then, like you said, the numbers are there, so you should think it would have gotten... Or maybe they didn't place high enough in the box office for them to be like, let's keep going with it. Or maybe they said, let's focus on Marvel. Let's focus on the, the superhero yeah, line and that, stuff. That's probably what happened. That, that's yeah. we're, we're making big money. You know what also probably why they made a ton of money off of this they might have thought big hero 6 was tied into the mcu so exactly now. and there's not a bot to this people are trying to figure out how's this tie in tony stark and all that but yeah 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 but i guess disney's like this is a good but marvel's doing better or mcu's doing gangbusters let's focus on that so on february 15 2015 this became the third highest grossing disney movie behind so it went from five to three Five to third in a year, only coming behind only The Lion King and Frozen in America. I don't believe that. Like, I just feel like that's messed up. Like, I don't, I don't, because there's so many classic Disney movies. Yeah, I don't see were, this. Like, this is not a common household. I even, see. even like, <laughs> I don't know what the minions are or Shrek or any, but like, this is a top five animated. Oh, well, see, that's what you this is, it's a Disney movie. But still, like, Toy Story is Disney, right? Or that's Pixar. No, well, it's Disney Pixar now, so. So what does what has Disney done animated wise? They have Princess and the Fox all those for the princesses, right? Yeah, they have all the princesses. Come on, there's no way this is top. I mean, That's maybe what, it is, maybe it is. Like, who am I? Who? What, what do I know? But I don't hear people saying, "Oh, I love Big Hero." Although when it came out, Beta Max was this, everywhere. This movie made um six hundred and ninety. Four billion, right, or something like that. Yeah, that's not that's not a lot. I mean, it's a lot, but not. I feel like Wally did more than no, that. No, you have man. to keep in mind this is all in America. Ratatouille, like, come on. But like Toy Story, I just looked it up. Only made three hundred ninety four point four million in the U.S. But is that just for inflation, or is that just? It's that's just in the U.S. though. In the nineties, though, right? The, I mean, this is. A, uh, I don't know if it's adjusted for inflation, but like it, it does point out that worldwide it made three point three billion dollars. That's what oh, I guess. Well, even just US, I'm, I guess. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll take it, I guess, but it's just, it doesn't seem right to me. That's all. You're really harping on this movie. You didn't like it, huh? No, I enjoyed the movie, but I don't think it was that fucking good. There's no way it's like top three or five. But it's We're not talking about quality. We're just going and talking about how. People, how many people went to see it? But, but if that's the fact, so then why is there no sequel? Like that's where my mind's at. Like, well, you think, especially a, overseas, it's they just like a sequel. They try to milk it as a TV show. <laughs> True, I guess. Uh, that's just it's, because, it's not adding up to me. That's all. like on the Wikipedia page. Um, you know how it gives you different categories. This yeah. one has extra categories. It has television series, comic yes. books, video games, toys. So they market the shit out of it, and they're in a um. 
but they're doing it with different products. I guess. Uh, it's just, it's just, it just feels weird, that's all. It doesn't feel like it adds up compared to other. And maybe because it's new to the zeitgeist compared to Toy Story and all the princess movies. I don't know. Is it Monsters, Inc., Disney, or is that Pixar? It's Pixar. I mean, it, Disney is Pixar. No, but like this is Disney Disney, right? I mean, I would assume they were they're including stuff like Toy Story and stuff because of it's owned by Disney. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, I don't want to harp on it, but it just feels weird. That's all. Like, uh, congratulations, Big Hero Six. I guess. Yeah, I know. Like, I'm not, like, I'm not hating on the movie. It just feels like those numbers are wrong. That's all. Look, I can only tell you what they tell me. <laughs> yeah. I am not like in their finances to tell you what they mean so it sounds like big disney's paying you off huh where's my cut at tj <laughs> anyway moving on um i do got some trailers you have trailer for how to train your dragon no actually i don't oh. i actually got a really good trailer that started to show um like different pixar movies uh-huh and like how they and the emotions they emote, which led right into inside out trailer it was really oh. cleverly done it okay. was really good I was actually really surprised. I thought it was like a mashup of Pixar things like they usually do. But no, it's a trailer for Inside Out. That's smart. Which I, which I have never saw. But it was a really good trailer. Yeah. Um, I got a trailer for the Diamond Editions of Aladdin. Ooh. It's my favorite Disney movie. Really? Well, that was my childhood movie. What did that come out in like the 50s? No, I'm kidding. Well, that came out in that was 90s, 90, right? 93. Huh. Aladdin's your childhood movie. Yep. Okay. I used to watch that on repeat. Really? On, VH- on VHS. <laughs> Well, it was like, what do you like about the movie so much? I don't know. It was just um, the music and stuff, I guess. I don't know. All right. So did you see the, a live action remake? No. I haven't seen any live action remakes. For good reasons. I no, don't know. It's kind of hard to beat Robin Williams. Yeah, yeah, it's a soulless cash grab. Uh, then I got a trailer for right, the Tinkerbell oh, God. and the Legend of the Never Beast. Wow, that sounds familiar. Um, apparently, there's a whole slew of Tinkerbell movies. Oh, yeah. That have different fairies and shit in them. I was like, oh, this is new. This is the first time I think we've had a movie that was just a pure Disney movie. So, this is the first time we got pure Disney oh, traffic. Oh, yeah, you're right. So, and then I got a trailer for um, Disney Infinity, the video game that's defunct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then I got a trailer for um, Star Wars Rebels. The show? The show. Okay. And Star Wars Clone Wars, The Lost Missions. When did they buy Star Wars? That was around 2014-ish. So that would make sense. Yeah, so they, they said they were average. I guess this is around the time they decided to um, make that, what was it? The Lost Missions is like tec- it's technically the fifth season. Yeah. Yeah, that what, makes sense. With the garbage Yoda going into the Force magic place at the end of it, uh, it's it's it goes into the lore, right? I guess, but that we've talked about. I don't know if we talked about this on air about Star Wars, but the lore is only good in certain instances. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> like, who who's asking for the Force shit? Like, come on, no one likes the Force shit. It's like <laughs> no one cares. It's magic. We're not supposed to know what the magic is. <laughs> Right, the more you explain it, the less interesting it becomes. Like, God damn it, guys. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's stupid. But someone's uh, probably liking it, I guess. I guess. I don't know. But that last season of Clone Wars is amazing. Oh, my. Just watching Darth Maul go through his, like, we've been all played, guys. Like, oh, so good. Is is that the one with Darth Maul? The one where um the clones start turning on. Uh, they have a soak uh, in that and trapped in the thing. Oh, uh, TJ, so good. Yeah, I know. It's it's you can tell when something is good when they take one of the worst characters and turn them into one of the best characters. What, the clones or Ahsoka? Ahsoka. <laughs> she was annoying a little kid in the show. And in the beginning, but by yeah. the end, she was like one of the best characters in that. Yes, yeah, like oh wow, character development, guys. They, they, they think it's a good, oh, goddamn good show. Uh, Marvel bought Star Wars in twenty twelve. So yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. DC, not DC, Disney bought Marvel. Disney bought, bought Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's all my trailers. Nice. Is that everything? Did we get through everything? Um, Yeah, there's not much, like you said, so I guess. 30 minutes, just on par. Yeah, all right. I guess we'll dive into the movie. Um, But yeah, the movie opens up with Steamboat Willie, so. My question right off the top of the, this thing is, I actually did really like this movie. Yeah. But I don't know if it's because of the movie's good, or if I was just in a mood for a simple superhero movie. Both. You know what it's I mean? Fair. It's very simple, but execute the simplicity really well. Like, it, like it was just refreshing to see yes. just a simple movie with nothing tied to anything. Yes. 
<laughs> when I first saw this, I thought the same thing. Like, it's just really good and it's really simple. And I watched it recently. I watched it for this for it's my third or fourth time watching it. It's like, oh, this is really a simple movie. Like you don't have to think at all. And it's you know, like I said, no tie-ins or Easter eggs. But like this is this yeah. is nice. This was it was because I really was really into the movie. I really did enjoy it. Yes, yeah, so you don't have to do any homework or like understand the references. Yeah, I was just like, and I couldn't tell if it was because of the quality of the movie or if it was just because it was you know just nothing attached to it. <laughs> So it's both, I would say. It's definitely both. So this movie opens up with robot battles. Yeah. And this seems to be prevalent in San Fran, Tokyo. Yes. <laughs> so I guess uh, it seemed a little weird to me that this is illegal robot fighting in the world, but whatever. I mean, it makes sense, I guess, right? Yeah. I mean, the first act, that we're just introduced to the characters. You know, you got the two brothers and, you know, they're really smart. Their parents are dead because it's Disney. <laughs> Yeah, they're being raised by their aunt Cass, who plays like no role in this. This, you know, it's funny. Yeah, the, the most prevalent character that I know about in this movie is Aunt Cass. What? Yeah, just from like the zeitgeist of things. Like, what, what message boards are you on, TJ? Because I don't like. I see pictures of her everywhere. <laughs> what? 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 What subreddits are you on, TJ? Because I need I to find these. I don't even go to the subreddit. <laughs> I don't even know what Reddit is. Oh, well, you're missing out. Um, really? like I thought she was a bigger role in this, and she is not. Yeah, nothing at all. Like, no offense to her, but yeah, she's they don't use her for anything. Like she was the only character that I recognized throughout the entire show. Wow. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so we get introduced to the kids and stuff, and you know, the one guy is j- the little the main character is just going around doing robot things because he's a doesn't have anything to do because he's not in school because he graduated and his brother is just as smart as him and is a scientist and stuff and so his older brother him, right yes his okay. older brother so he takes him to his lab and shows him his experiments and he gets him involved and he went now the brother wants to go to the school with his brother and you know setting up a lot of things and then but he's got to win like a science fair thing and he creates like nanobots essentially yeah. that's my biggest gripe with the movie i don't like nanobots in general, and the fact that there's such a big plot point in this movie, I was like, eh, but it doesn't take away from the movie. No, I mean, this movie is, it actually makes sense, the nanobots in this, because this seems like a relatively normal world, what do you, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no, like, magic or anything in this world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's, like, no superheroes or nothing in this world either. So it's just like, okay, so if we're gonna have a supervillain, it's gotta be someone who has something like nanobots you know what i'm saying that's fair so like this seems like the dawn of a superhero age essentially i guess my thing is like it, there's such a big useful ex machina ish kind of device like if, they're, like if they were gonna make sequels like how do you step this up besides going into other dimensions and time travel and shit like magic it just there's such like an end-all be-all technology i feel you yeah, know i i guess i can see that but they kind of already kind of dived into that stuff no they did they movie. did like, the dimensional shit yeah and like i said this feels like the dawn of a superhero um universe you know what i'm saying like this is the first steps towards that rather than um an established one that's already has all the stuff in it so and what's how superhero stories go is that you know you get a superhero and then from there everything starts to escalate and escalate and escalate so anyway so yeah um so the brother takes his little brother to the lab and shows him his new experiment this squishy marshmallow robot thing and good idea it's a good idea to have yeah it's he's like a medical droid essentially yeah and so yeah i mean the first act pretty much ends with a science fair he obviously wins the science fair we get like a corporate guy trying to buy his nanobots and then the scientist guy saying, no, oh, he's a bad guy. Don't buy his nanobots. And then the place goes on fire and explodes as the brother runs it after him. And then, he, <laughs> and then he dies. Boo-hoo. Or does he? Well, see, you know what's funny? Yeah. I actually didn't see this twist coming. Which twist of him? The, the guy, the brother the, dying? The brother dying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they actually got me. I was like, I because for some reason I thought the brother was part of the big Hero Six or something, and then no, they Makes just kill him off. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is a Disney movie. Now, did you feel anything when it happened, or like you're like, eh. well, no, not at first because I was like, when they told me he was dead, I was like, oh, he's definitely coming back at the end or something. 
<laughs> because the bad guy they told me they had was yeah. definitely not the bad guy because that's because it's a Disney movie and Disney yeah. movies like to give you twists. Yes. So I was trying to figure out who the bad guy is. I was like, and I was wondering. Uh, I think it would be cool if the bad guy was actually ended up being the brother. <laughs> That's what I thought when I first saw this movie. Like, when you see him controlling the nanobots, like, oh, that's definitely the brother, right? Yeah. No, it's not the brother. No. Brother stays dead. Unless, you- unless in the TV series. I, in my heart of hearts, the brother comes back eventually. Either in a postponed sequel or in the show. Who knows? Because there's no way he's staying dead. Right? I mean, it, it, it kind of takes it kind of takes away the story if you take away the brother's death, though. If the yeah. if the brother's not the villain, then the only thing that's driving the superhero side of things is his death. I mean, they could make they could have like a Bucky moment and make the brother come back brainwashed or what have you. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't think so, though. I think this is. I mean, he, he has, needs to be dead. I think I don't think Disney brings people back from the dead in their movies. Uh, yeah. you're probably right. Like, um. They kill off the parents in Frozen, and they're still dead. Yeah, but they're parents, though. Yeah, but they kill them off on screen. Do they really? Yeah. They sh- they go on a boat ride, and then the boat gets... Well, maybe they did come back. I don't know. I haven't seen the sequels. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. Like, that he's dead. Like, All I know is Bambi's mom doesn't come back. Well, it'd be weird if she would come back. <laughs> so, they kill her <laughs> off on screen, too. Well, that's also old Disney. We're talking about new Disney, TJ. That's like First Testament. Yeah, Disney. We're I, in I don't, Second Testament. I don't think... Again, they, I don't watch enough. I do watch a lot of Disney, but I guess they don't bring back... Not Disney themselves. Plot points. Yeah. Marvel, that's a different thing. But the thing is, with Disney movies, though, there aren't, there aren't, there aren't a lot of continuations. No, no, there really isn't. So... You get the one and done, so there's no chance to bring people back. That's fair, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty sure the brother stays dead. He might. He definitely might. Uh, it's better if he does stay dead, for sure, but I just felt like he would come back, because it makes sense to me. No, I thought it was either going to be the brother or the guy it ended up being. And, uh, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the guy that's telling you it's going to be. It's, and I I, think I was like like 20%, maybe it's the, uh, <laughs> maybe it's the yeah. evil corporate guy, only because... They could cheap out on us with the villain, but that's then when the, the but when the here the main character is like, oh, that's the bad guy. He's like, no, that's not going to be the bad. Guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's like how lazy of a movie would that be? Like, that's the bad guy. Like, oh, that's the bad guy. Yeah, I mean, but I wouldn't put it past them to do it. No. So anyway, so yeah, and that's the first act. Second act is the main character dealing with his trauma. We find out that there's a new th- so that his he finds his nanobots are still a thing. And the bad guys are in control of him, so he puts together a superhero team with all his brother's best friends, and they become the big hero six. That's, that's nice. It's got it's it's got a cool um, montage to it. Uh huh. But like, they got one guy who's has no power. He's like, he's that's completely bad. useless. Well, his power is money, TJ. He's Batman. Oh, I see. Well, no, apparently he's <laughs> he's something. His dad's Stan Lee, so... That too, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's got that going for him. <laughs> yeah, he's just a stoner who's like, this is just a mascot. Literally a mascot, thinking about it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so, every other character has things. So in the second act, we find out that the, the, the scientist guy that the main character looked up to was alive, and he's stole the nanobots. I'm not sure, did he start the fire? He must have. I think he said it, right? Or was it a legitimate accident? No, I think he said he started just to get the nanobots. No, I thought he said he used the nanobots to survive. No, because Hero would be wouldn't be upset because the brother died that way. He started the fire, saving himself. Not his fault that Hero well, came. No, in. Hero got mad because he said my brother came in to save you, and you yeah. did nothing. You did nothing to help him, and he's like that was his choice. That's true, but also like he started, he must start a fire, right? I didn't think that's what I. That's I'm not sure. What's the wiki say? That's what I'm reading as I'm talking. Because <laughs> there's no way. Wiki does say the brother dies. Yes. Yeah, that's not telling me. Well, it makes sense to me that the guy started the fire to get to the nanobots. So it says in the wiki that he, when he was revealed that he was he he reveals that he actually escaped using the microbots to shield himself from the flames. See, here's a Disney fan I'm reading right now, and and it says shocked and enraged that Tadashi died in vain. Hero goes in after all. Wait, what? They say the reason why Hero attacked. Um, Callahan, the scientist, is because his brother died in vain, not because he started the. 
of the Disney fandom wiki I'm reading right now says Yokio, Yokei, whoever his name is, confronts Hero and Bay- Baymax at the warehouse. After Hero's departure, Robert steals the microbots for his own uh, nefarious purposes and seek revenge on Dr. Kree. And to cover his tracks, the professor sparks a fire and sends showcase all ablaze. Well, I mean, but that's a fan wiki. You can't trust the fans. <laughs> but you can. Shit. <laughs> that's true. The fans are stupid. Yes, they are. <laughs> but it makes sense that he would start the fire, and that's fine. Yeah, but the, they don't explicitly say it, though, is what I'm trying to get at. They might have, but I, I don't want to pull the movie up in case it might. No, that's fine. Recording. No, like I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they didn't say it. Well, it doesn't matter. This is all yeah, a yeah. technicality, whatever, yes. whatever the case it may be. We find out that he, Callahan, stole the nanobots because they gave him, they give him powers essentially, so he can go after the evil corporate guy who had created teleportation technology. And Callahan's daughter is this was the test subject to go through it, I guess. And then if something went wrong, the teleport explosion. She got trapped in another dimension. They thought he was dead. And you know, so that, that's, that's what he gets for using nepotism, right? I'm pretty sure there's other candidates who are just as qualified, but since it's, she's related to him, they got to use her. Nepotism, folks. Nepotism. Yeah, that's probably nepotism. It's definitely nepotism. There's no way it's not nepotism. I mean, you could throw in any idiot in a pod and say, Tear, drive this through a teleporter. Yeah, but well, it has to be his daughter. Come on. Plot points, plot stuff, and shit like that. In any case, <laughs> I'm sorry. The climax is the bad guy trying to kill the um, corporate guy guy and destroy his stuff and the, so the heroes come and they stop them but hey after they stop them by sucking all the nano um bots in through a in through the teleportation portal that is his revenge is to suck him into a, the bad guy into a teleportation circle essentially because of his daughter and then they suck all the nanobots so but they baymax the robot notices hey there's someone still alive in there so Hero and Baymax go in, and Baymax sacrifices himself because I guess they can't swim in this new reality, <laughs> and <laughs> he uses his rocket punch to let Hero escape with the pod, and hey, the scientist's daughter's alive and freed, but now he's going to jail, so no happy ending for him, I guess. I like that. Um, and then, yeah, we think he loses it, but... He still has the rocket hand, and in the rocket hand uh, is Baymax's chip that gives him his personality. So he builds a new Baymax, and then the movie ends. So yeah, the movie ends there. But um, yeah, if he takes out that chip, doesn't he just deactivate? What do you mean? That's what I thought too, right? <laughs> so, well, I guess no, because they did it earlier, and he had that red chip still in him, the uh, Kung Fu right. chip. And he still activated, but he was now a harmful. Yeah, but if there would be no chip in him at that time. No, no, because at the end, he still had the red one in. No. He still had to do fighting stuff. I didn't see them take that red chip out. I thought they took the red chip out. I don't think so. I guess he did still fight. Yeah, so they have to keep that in. Okay, I guess that makes sense. So they have to keep that one in to make sure he can do it. So they don't ever want to go after the... Goes for that Baymax ever again because he's a homicidal monster. And the- well, I guess if that's if you, it'd be cool to see that. But I guess if he, <laughs> if he is told to kill, I guess by Hero's voice. But yeah, they got a well, homicidal that's a, Baymax that's sequel inside stuff, of, Yeah, inside of a portal right now. He could probably control all the nanobots, which would be pretty cool. Anyway. Yeah. The movie's over, but we have a post credit scene because wait, there's a post credit scene. Yeah, because oh, I'm an idiot. Duh. Because. They knew this was a Marvel movie, and they knew people would be... They literally say this in the wiki. They like they added a post credit scene because they knew it was a Marvel movie, and people would be waiting, and they didn't want to disappoint people. What is it? Is it good? You didn't watch it? No, I, I didn't even think... I didn't even think to look for a post credit scene. I was like, okay, good, it's over. Turn it off. Yeah, um, it's the... um, What's his name? The guy with no powers and no scientific ability. Oh, is he just spinning a sign or something? Huh? Is he just spinning a sign or some stupid shit? No, he's looking at a portrait of his dad Stan Lee and he touches it and it reveals a secret compartment behind it and it's got all these superhero outfits oh. in there and he's looking around and then Stan Lee walks in his dad walks in and it's Stan Lee's voice and he says we got a lot to talk about and then they do the stupid underwear thing inside backwards and stuff <laughs> and then it's how they end it <laughs> and then it said Stan Lee as what's his name so and so's dad yes Okay. So Stanley got a line or two. I always watch the end of every movie now, just in case. I usually do too, but I just I just completely forgot that was a thing. So that's, that's a solid post credit. Yeah, it was okay. Yeah, I like that. It was almost sequel baiting, but yeah, no sequel yet. Yeah. 
And that was Big Hero 6. Yeah. I liked it. No, yeah, it's good. I figured you would like the movie. It's a solid movie. Although the second, like I said, I got the second twist pretty easily. Yeah, yeah, that one wasn't. I think the de- the brother dying was like the most surprising. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it got me. So yeah, I remember when I first saw it. I was like, oh yeah, sad. But then, like you said, you're thinking, okay, it's got to be the bad guy, right? Like, yeah, oh, he's so dead, dead. Like, oh like, uh-uh. uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, 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 I think the big emotional moment is when you realize he is dead, yeah. and then he finds. Then Baymax plays yeah. the him building Baymax. Yes. So I wish this movie would have played more on emotions. Like it's not sappy enough for me. It's good, but I wish it was more. Yeah, I don't know. It's it wouldn't be a superhero movie then. Uh, true, I guess. But like this is an origin story, so I would assu- I would assume that they were going to do something. Deeper, they would do it in a sequel. Yeah, I guess. I guess because they yeah. had a lot. They had a lot to do in this. Movie. Oh yeah, they did a lot of world building. I'm glad we got to see San Fran, Tokyo when he flew around. So yeah. for a while, we were just like, I guess it's a place, but seeing it, I was like, okay. San Fran, Tokyo is a little weird. Why do they got spinning fans up in the in the the uh, sky? <laughs> why a lot of things they do, right? Yeah, I don't know what's going on in this world or why it's, some of the things are happening, but. Okay. It's for a sequel to explain and dive into, right? I guess. I think it is one of the jewels, but... Yeah, uh, that, yeah. But yeah, would uh, I guess rate this movie, though? Yeah. Uh, what do you think? I'm going to give Big Hero 6 a big... Um, It's like it's like a... This is my 15th time seeing it, so it's kind of lessened for me, but if I had to go back off my first time seeing it and this time and comparing it, I'd probably say it's a, it's a strong 7. It's a 7, I would say. Yeah, I was leaning in between a 7 and an 8. Yeah, it's nothing lower than a 7. It's, yeah. it's not deep enough to be like higher than a 7. Well, with that not being deep, it's, it's, it's so simple. They do everything right. So I was like, okay, it's a safe 7. Yeah, I mean, it's a little predictable in spots. Yes. But I can't really say there's anything wrong with the movie. No. And I did really like it. I think I'll go with an 8. That's fair. That's definitely fair. Be kind to it. <laughs> That's a very fun movie. It's definitely watchable. Yeah. I mean, it's not a nine, so. No. And the whole family can enjoy this, in yeah, my it, opinion. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with this. It's harmless. Exactly. The music's fun. The characters are fun. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely, definitely give it a watch. It's enjoyable. All right. I guess that's it. Yeah. And yeah, no, nothing witty, huh? Uh, no. Unless you have some wit within you. Nah. Uh.